we're good to go. All right, how's it going, everybody? Ark and K back with a, another little recap video. Uh, we just played our week two opponent with the Montana Mill Tanks. Valerie's asleep behind me, waking up slowly. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go over the game today. We're going to go over the team um, and see how the game went. Uh, it started off a bit rough last week. We had an unfortunate 1 0 loss to Josh and then Minnesota Mammoth Wines. So, hoping to capitalize on some of our mistakes that we made last week and uh, get back in the win column this week. So, uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and take a look at our team builder this week. So, first things first, we're going to go with RuPaul the Kangaskhan with a scrappy ability. So, I, I thought of a cute little idea to do this week um, that involved running an adrenaline orb on Kangaskhan. So, due to, due to scrappy, uh, I'm unaffected by intimidate. However, um, Brent has two Intimidate Mons in Quillfish and in Luxray, so if one of them were to pop my Adrenaline Orb, I would get plus one speed here. And with max attack, adamant nature, and max speed, uh, with power-up punches and fake-outs and stuff, um, this thing absolutely tears through his team. So, very situational, kind of likely that it's going to happen, but um, nonetheless, I thought it was a fun set, and I was really excited to see what it could do. So, that is Kangaskhan for the week. Let's move on into a new addition that we have here. Uh, we made a couple of changes to the team since last week. Uh, we dropped Masharna, we dropped Haunter, and we traded away Magneton, and in return, we got Rotom Fan here, Aromatis, and Flareon uh, from Delwyn James Potter, coached by uh, Charlo. So, a couple new additions. Uh, our type diversity is a little bit better now, so I'm hoping that team building gets a little more creative and I'm less confined to the same options every week. But uh, nonetheless, this is Danny Phantom with Levitate, Heavy Duty Boots, Modest Nature, Max HP and Max Defense. Um, this was my primary hazard remover for the week. Uh, went almost natural bulk in defense on everything uh, if it was defensive this week. Uh, originally started off with a nasty plot set with this thing, but figured that um, defog was a bit too important and I liked the idea of having discharge uh, for some paralysis and it does some pretty decent damage to, to the Montana Meltings team. Uh, and that coupled with air slash and then of course volt switch just to give me a little bit more utility and a little bit of a chance to, to get out of a sticky situation if I have it. But excited that I have this thing on the team. I think it's really solid um, and makes my tight matchups a bit better than magnet on wood. So let's move on in to Number three here, we're going to run Carl Weezer the Weezing this week with Levitate, Black Sludge, Bold Nature, Max HP, and Max Defense. Uh, I will tell you that this thing is a monster. Uh, Weezing walls out a good majority of his team, especially if we're running this set. Uh, we're going Protect, Flamethrower, Infestation, and Will-O-Wisp. So uh, the plan is here is we're going to Will-O-Wisp stuff right away. If it wants to stay in, it can. Otherwise, we'll go for an infestation, we'll trap it in, and we'll do chip damage with Flamethrower. Uh, Flamethrower against Sand Slash almost one-shots it in general. Uh, and then Protect, of course, just to get a little bit of that residual damage as well. So I thought that Weezing was an incredibly good set this week. And uh, spoilers, it performs pretty, pretty well. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is Carl Weezer for the week. Let's move on into Aromatis, our new addition this week. Uh, gonna run Aroma Veil, keep us away from taunt and infatuation and stuff. Uh, leftovers, Bold Nature again, Max HP, Max Defense, uh, decided to go Wish Toxic Protect on it and opted to maybe go for like Heal Bell or something, but then um, I'm not running any attacking moves and I kind of am against that. Um, and I thought Thunderbolt was the best chance that I had of doing damage to the most amount of things. Originally I was going to go Psychic, but um, wasn't doing a whole lot of damage to things like Sand Slash, and I thought Thunderbolt with the chance to like paralyzed stuff could be pretty decent. Uh, it does really well against like far fetched, uh, quillfish especially. So I thought Thunderbolt was okay and uh, was a, a solid single attack move for sure. Fifth on the docket, we have Pince Edward the Pincer with Moxie. Decided to run Choice Scarf this week. So um, Brent's got a, a pretty scary flapple on his team. And given the opportunity to Dragon Dance once or twice, it can really kind of tear through what I have. Um, so I thought that maybe running a Scarf Pincer this week to make it faster would be a good idea. And x Scissor against Flapple is doing like 120 to 140% or something stupid like that. <laughs> so I thought that it was a really, really strong option. Um, ran Earthquake, x Scissor, Knockoff, of course, just to get rid of some items. Um, opted 
between Stone Edge and Stealth Rock, but I feel like rocks were pretty decent for some extra chip damage. I had a lot of calcs that were in kind of the like 85 to 98 percentage range, so having a little bit of that extra chip damage might be decent. And if I get a good matchup right away, I can just get rocks in and I can end up switching right away anyway. So I really like the pincer set. I think that this thing is scary, scary good, especially if it gets a moxie up. And uh, yeah, so let's move on in. To the last piece of the puzzle this week with Arnold Palmer, the executor. This thing is spooky, spooky good. Uh, ran a couple games on ladder with it, and it was probably the most like helpful thing in the world, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, decided to go chlorophyll, life orb with a modest nature, max special attack, a little bit of HP investment to help me live some things, and 136 speed was enough to make sure that I outspeed everything on his side of the field once I get Sunny Day up. Um, but decided to go Solar Beam Psychic and Sleep Powder, which I thought was a really, really cool set. I think Sleep Powder is... <laughs> um, when it works, it works very, very well. And uh, Solar Beam does some really, really solid damage across his entire team. Psychic is there for the Rabidash and uh, stuff like that. So that is the team for the week. I really personally, I think that this team is much, much better than the team I, I deduced and brought for week one. So let's hop into the game here and let's see what we can do. So I'm looking at Brent's team right away and I'm noticing <laughs> that our, uh, our Kangas Constrat is most likely, well, not most likely, it is it's totally toast because neither Luxray or Coralfish are there. Uh, Rapidash is kind of scary, it tears through Pinsir and Executor really easily. Uh, the Lycan Rock can really destroy Rotom if I'm not careful. Sandslash does a number on me as well. Flapple, I'm super not <laughs> not looking forward to going against that. Um, Miltank, obviously, you got to bring the Mass Got pick. And then uh, Farfetch is getting some love too. So I think my best option, let me make sure my music is off so I'm not blaring you guys. Uh, I think my best option here is just to lead Pinsir. Um, I can get rocks up if I get a favorable matchup or if the flap or something comes in, which I'm scared that it might right off the bat. Uh, and I don't want to lose the game right away. So I'm just going to send in Pinsir right away. If it sends in Flapple, I get Nexus or off. Uh, if it's anything else, I can get rocks. I can go Earthquake. Earthquake kills like half of his team off the bat. So let's just hop in here. I'm going to go Pinsir and in comes Flapple right away. So I already have myself a really favorable matchup here. And you know what? I was like, I'm not going to overthink this. If he goes for a Dragon Dance, it's going to be really bad for me. I'm just going to click X Scissor and see what happens. So fortunately he stays in and there's not a chance that Flappa lives that. We get a Moxie proc and then in comes Rabidash. So um, after one Moxie boost, I think Xers is doing like 50 to 60-ish percent. Um, it's not nearly as much as I need it to. So, uh, and there's no reason to sack off Pinsir at this point in the game. So I figured, you know what, I'm just going to go into one of my physical walls here. Uh, debated between Aromatisse and Weezing. Ultimately decided that Weezing is the man for the job here. He goes for a Flare Bit. I take 26% damage. And then I'm going to get that Black Sludge Recovery. In comes Sam Slash here, and I'm going to go for Infestation. And this is where things start going so, so well for me. Um, had he stayed Rabidash, I would have been in kind of a weird spot. Um, because Flamethrower and Willowisp aren't going to do anything to Rabidash, obviously. And I, I don't really want to Infestation, so I would have had to probably double back into something else. Um, but fortunately he goes Sand Slash and I have this thing trapped already. So now that I have it trapped, um, I can pretty freely just go for uh, Will-O-Wisp or Flamethrower. Um, Flamethrower I don't think was like guaranteed based off of Infestation doing like 1% damage, but I, I don't remember if that's actually what it was. But, um, I opted as like, you know what, I could go Flamethrower here, but if he's like a max attack and he goes for something really, really bad here in Weezing, turns out that I can't 1v1 this thing. Just to be on the safe side, I decide to go for a Will-O-Wisp. He knocks off my Black Sludge, which is a bit unfortunate, um, but we're going to get that Will-O-Wisp off regardless. So he's going to take chip damage here. He's going to go for Stealth Rocks, actually. Flamethrower is going to come out and do 66-ish percent. So ultimately, I mean turns out of order but uh the flamethrower is going to be important regardless so now we're already up 2-0 uh and wheezing is <laughs> taking things in stride here so out comes lycanroc and after running through i think choice banded lycanroc only does like 40 percent with stone edge against me so i was like you know what i'm just gonna go for burns because 
Brent's got like pretty much all physical attackers, and as long as I land Will O Wisps, I'll be in good shape. So he goes for a Stone Edge, unfortunately he misses. Um, would have put me down at 30%, probably would have changed a lot of stuff for me right off the bat, especially since I don't have Black Sludge. But I'll go for a Will O Wisp here, and he's gonna go for Excel Rock, which <laughs> does 8% eight, eight damage. So Weezing is eating stuff up. We're gonna go for Infestation. We're going to start getting that residual damage 18% each turn. Of course, we're going to go for Protect. We get that extra 18%. We're going to stay away from as much damage as we can here. He goes for Close Combat. We eat that up. And Flamethrower, in combination with the Burn, is going to be enough to take out Lycanroc. So, we're in a very good situation still. Um, Weezing is still above half HP. Uh, in comes Miltank. Now, Miltank is concerning to me because Miltank can be any number of different things. Uh, he can be a defensive set with Milk Drink. He can be like fully offensive. And this thing is like spooky fast, right? This thing's got like base like 100 speed. So it's going to outspeed almost everything except for like my pincer right now. So if Weezing goes down, I'm in a little bit of trouble. Um, so he goes for EQ but forgets that I'm Levitate, which is really unlucky for him. Um, had I been neutralizing gas, which I actually was uh, thinking about maybe trying out, this probably would have killed me here. I didn't run the calc exactly, um, but I'm guessing that it would have been pretty, pretty close. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I decided to switch and go levitate uh, a couple days before the game, and it turns out that it paid off pretty well. So uh, I'm going to get off a will o -Wisp here. We're going to land it. Perfect. And now Miltank's physical attack is pretty worthless. He goes for a fire punch and gets a burn of his own. Uh, but we're going to start infestation in here. We don't have the Black Sludge to counteract the damage that we're taking here. So I'm just going to hope that the Milk Tank doesn't have Milk Drink here and it's just a fully offensive set and see how much chip I can get in before I swap out. I want to preserve my tiebreaker score as much as I can. Uh, I go for a Flamethrower here. We're still taking chip damage. Uh, I go for a Protect here just to get that extra damage. And he is a Milk Drink set. So I'm thinking here... I'm at 19%, so I can live like two extra turns here. I'm just gonna click Flamethrower. Actually, yeah, no, 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 no. We're, we're gonna we're gonna back this up a little bit. So from this point on, uh, now that I know that he's Milk Drink, actually, let's just rewind the, the thought train here. I was like, you know what? If I toss a Flamethrower out here against his Body Slam, uh, he's almost certainly just gonna go for like Milk Drink after burn and infestation and stuff. And since Milk Tank is burned, there's almost no way that I'm going to die from anything if I swap into Kangaskhan right now. So from this burn here, I'm going to read his Milk Drink. Actually, we go Rotom Fan. Uh, I think I wanted to get rid of Hazards first, actually. We played this rest of the game here like pretty ultra safe for the most part. Oh, what I actually was thinking here is I did not want to risk Kangaskhan getting paralyzed on a Body Slam coming in. And since, you know, I am an electric type here, I cannot get uh, paralyzed from body slam and we're max defense. So the crit's only gonna do 19% actually. Um, infestation's gone, so he can swap now if he wants. I'm just gonna get rid of the rocks here. And we're just gonna go for some chip damage on the air slash. And this is where the, the, the read on the milk drink comes in again pretty pretty handy here because I want to get Kangaskhan in on a turn where I know that he's not going to body slam me so we don't rest the paralysis right so we're going to go for an air slash here I know that this turn he's going to hit me and then most likely the following turn that he is going to go for a milk drink right so he's going to fire punch me here I'm going to take six percent damage we're going to go for an air slash and now from this point forward I was like you know what I think Kangaskhan just wins from here so what we're going to do is we're just going to swap out and read the milk drink so we don't get body slammed. There it is. And I'm going to go fake out here just to get a little extra chip damage in. And now the game plan is just power up punch and hope we don't get paralyzed or burned by fire punch. So we go to plus one attack here. He EQs me for 12 damage. <laughs> Man, power up punch. Uh, taking him down to about a quarter here. Dude, Weezing was like a god in this game like willow wisping everything just crip like there's so little that you can do after you get burned in those situations and like kangaskhan getting to the attack stat that it is here it's just gonna start tearing through stuff unfortunate little farfetch is just gonna die to body slam there and then rapidash comes in 
He's gonna Flare Bliss me once. I take a decent amount of damage there. Um, but fortunately for me, EQ is going to land. And we're gonna take the game 6-0. So, honestly, um, things could not have gone better in this game for me, personally. Um, we brought a really, really solid team. Like I said, uh, Weezing was incredible. Um, there's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, just getting the will list and the burns on stuff and, and being able to trap things and just steadily ruin, <laughs> ruin the team from the inside out was uh, really, really positive. So, oh, excuse me. And then, yeah, Kangaskhan finally uh, redeeming herself a little bit from last week. I'm getting three kills at the end there, too. So, um, yeah, I have no complaints. Uh, GG's to Brent. Uh, he's showing improvement each and every week. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of time to team up this week, unfortunately. So, wished him the best of luck next week. I believe he's playing Quincy. Um, let me just double check here who we have for next week. And we'll check this out in real time. Uh, schedule. So next week we have Ruben and the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So uh, his team is always super scary and Ruben's kind of the type of player where it's kind of an all or nothing deal. And um, it's gonna be difficult trying to think of what, what to do to counteract it. I know that a lot of his Pokemon don't necessarily do great in the speed tier. Um, however, they hit very, very hard and they, they, they tend to live a lot of hits too. So uh, excited to play Ruben next week. Um, hope everybody's having a blast so far. I've rambled enough at this point. So, uh, yeah, again, GG's, Montana Mill Tanks. Good luck next week. And uh, finally back in the win column. And hopefully we, we ride the wave here and we can get a win next week too. All right, peace.